dear friends, I'm Pastor Rosie Rivera, and I am the pastor here at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church here in Woodstock, Georgia. Thank you for joining us today, even if you're watching this later in the day, um, but I will be doing these to time of reflection and devotion during this Advent season um, at 10 a.m. every Wednesday. And um, it's an opportunity, of course, for us to be reminded of what this season is all about as we prepare for the celebration of the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so um, I'm going to start by lighting some Advent candles first, and then we are going to uh, sing a couple of songs before I dive into the devotion. And then, of course, we will close with prayer. Um, and that will sort of be the format every week. So if you're just tuning in for the first time, if you've never been on Facebook Live, that's okay. You don't have to do anything. You can sing along with the songs if you want to. And if you just want to sit and listen, that's okay too. So I'm going to start, though, by uh, lighting some Advent candles and invite you to join me. Um, if you have Advent candles at home, uh, you might make this a regular practice as you um, continue to uh, journey with us through this Advent season um, as we, pr again, prepare for the celebration of the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. So my dog is sitting right here on the steps of the, of the, uh, <laughs> of the altar area. I probably shouldn't say that too loud in case some of my members are watching, but anyway... <laughs> We're going to light candles here, um, and, uh, and then we will begin our time of devotion. So, <clears throat> lighting a candle in the darkness helps us find our way. In darkness, we lose direction. We cannot see where we have been or where we are going. A single candle flickering brightly helps us find our way again. From Psalm 80. Stir up your might and come to save us. Restore us, O oh God. Let your face shine that we may be saved. Light one candle, see it glow brightly so that all may know how one candle shows the way, making our darkness bright as God's day. Restore us, O oh God. Let your face shine that we may be saved, and we pray. Dear God, on this first week of Advent, let this light shine brightly as the days grow shorter, so that we will be ready for your face to shine upon us at Christmas. In the Savior's name we pray. Amen. All right. So we'll be lighting a, a different candle, of course, every week during this season, but <clears throat> until then, we just have the one candle. So for those of you that know I play a little guitar, I am no expert <clears throat> by any means, <clears throat> but I do like to sing. So I'm going to invite you to sing some, I know it's Advent, but I can't help it. I love Christmas carols, and I know that we're not supposed to sing them during Advent. I know all the reasons why, but <clears throat> I can't help it. So if you like Christmas carols as much as I do, I invite you to sing with me. So um, we're going to start out with angels we have heard on high, okay?
Singer song number one. <clears throat> Can't play that one very well, so we're gonna skip over that one. So <laughs> I, I I put a bunch of songs in this uh, notebook, but I some of them I some I play better than others, so it's okay. Let's try Silent Night. joining us today for, I don't know what I'm going to call this. I, I called it praise and reflection at my last church, but um, I feel like I should call it something different, but that's what I'm going to stick with for now. Um, but I'm Pastor Rosie. I'm the pastor here at Good Shepherd Lutheran in Woodstock, Georgia. So thank you for joining us today. Um, every week we'll be lighting an Advent candle, singing a couple of carols, and then doing a devotion. And of course, a time of prayer at the end. So I'm going to uh, dive into our study for today. I'm going to keep it really short, but it's good for us to ponder things and to reflect as we uh, are in this season of expectant hope as we await the celebration of the Lord, uh, the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. So um, I'm going to start out by reading our, our focus of um, scripture today, which is from Psalm 96, and it's fairly short, so I'm going to read the whole thing. Um, but we're going to focus on one particular verse here, but we're, I'm going to read the whole thing. It's only uh, 13 verses. So here we go. From Psalm 96. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be revered above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. That's the focus verse for today. I'll come back to that. Here's verse 7. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. The world is firmly established. It shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord. For he is coming. For he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the earth, the world, with righteousness and the people with his truth. And uh, I'm going to go back now and reread verse 6, which is our focus uh, verse for today. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Well, I think... Uh, what I want to start out with today is thinking about what sanctuary means. So obviously right now I am sitting in the worship space, the sanctuary space, 
of Good Shepherd Lutheran here in Woodstock, Georgia. We have the beautiful uh, Good Shepherd uh, stained glass window high above the altar area. Our Christmas tree, of course, is up with the Christmas on it. We adorn the altar with blue colors, as there's our, my altar right there. And, uh, of course, the, the, the blue uh, pyramids and, and, of course, the blue candles to commemorate the season of waiting, which is the color of blue. And around the windows in our sanctuary space, we have greenery and bows, and there's wreaths all over the place. But let me ask you an important question. Why do you come to this sanctuary? Why is it important to worship? Sanctuary. You know, I remember an old film where uh, that was the word that someone screamed, Sanctuary! Sanctuary! It was a word to proclaim that a person was seeking a place of refuge, right? A place to provide safety, to provide comfort, to provide a place where we can worship our God. But does it only have to happen in this space? Well, of course not. Worship can happen anywhere, right? I, I had a, a girl that I went to seminary with. <clears throat> she was rather eclectic, and she's no longer in ministry, so I can talk about her. But anyway, she was uh, kind of out there, and she talked about the importance of worshiping in nature. She talked about building a church in the trees and that she wanted a uh, tree house church. Not a bad idea when you really think about it. Have you ever seen tree house masters? I mean, it's not a bad idea when you think about it. Because when we are in nature, of course, it's hard to miss the awesomeness of God, right? When you are among nature, I mean, if I'm being truly honest, uh, most of you know that I love to camp. And, and um, when I am in nature, I feel so deeply connected to the earth, to the, um, the beauty of God's creation, especially in the fall season. But when we come into a worship space, the sanctuary that we worship in, what do you think about? when you're here? What crosses your mind in your worship experiences? Maybe you've had a variety of different types of worship experiences. Maybe you've been moved by a sermon. Doesn't have to be mine. It can be somebody else's sermon. Maybe you have been stirred by prayer. Maybe you have been touched by the, the, the way that we share our gifts as a church. Worship means different things to different people. And I think it's important for us to also think about what does sanctuary mean? And what does any of this have to do with the season of Advent? Well, the season of Advent, at the word Advent is a Latin word, which means to come. And when we come to worship, really, I love that the Advent season is kind of the beginning of the church year. We come into God's presence to receive love and grace, to receive the nourishment, to receive the refuge and hope, the expectant hope of what is to come. Because the beginning of the church year is just that. It's just the beginning of what we are then going to learn in this place, which is the life and legacy of Jesus Christ, through whom, with whom, and in whom we come to this space for. And so it's important for us to think about why we are here. Why is it so important that we do certain things in worship? Why is it that our sanctuary turns from the long season of green to blue? Blue is a royal color. And if you look up um, traditionally in uh, 16, 1700s, the, the color of royal blue, the reason why it's called royal blue is because these are the colors that adorned kings 
kings and queens. And of course, as we prepare an expectant hope to await the coming of our Lord, we all know him as the King of Kings. And so this, this moment of sanctuary and hope is is what this whole season is about. It's about us preparing. It's about us getting ready. Some of you may be so busy with the busyness of this season that we forget what it's all for. And so I hope that as I read in the Advent, oh, that candle's almost out of oil, isn't it? <laughs> that light's almost out. <laughs> But that's okay. I'm just going to keep rolling. Uh, so I think it's important for us to be reminded also of the light of Christ. The light of Christ which illuminates our path to bring light into our darkness. As, the, as we read um, in, the, um, in the little litany I read for the opening there. You know, we are in the season where it gets, we have longer, shorter days and longer darkness. But here's the thing about darkness. You know, darkness gets a bad rap. Um, I think we think of darkness and we think of evil things, bad things. Well, the thing is, is that, you know, if there were not darkness, we could never see the stars. If there were not darkness, we would have no need for light. And so I think it's important for us to be reminded of that too that the season of Advent is about illuminating our dark paths so that we can once again journey and recommit ourselves to, the, to our Savior, Jesus Christ, in which we celebrate his birth in just a few weeks. So some of the questions, um, by the way, I'm getting my um, devotions. I probably should plug this. This is uh, from Book of Faith, Advent Reflections, You Shall Have a Song. And if you want to buy the book, you don't have to, but if you want to buy the book, um, I'm sure you can probably, I know it's available in Augsburg Fortress. Um, that's the ELCA's uh, um, publishing house. But you would look for the Book of Faith series. And um, this is just a little Advent devotion. And so every Wednesday, I'll be pulling the text from this. Um, so some of the other questions that it asks, it invites us to reflect on on this particular passage is, do you remember a time when you did not want to go to church to worship? Yes, that's Sunday morning when my alarm goes off at 5.45. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. Okay. Um, how or when do you experience God's strength and beauty in worship? Ooh, that's a good question. And how can you be a mirror of that for others? That is another very good question. So I think it's really important for us to be reminded in this season of waiting that um, there is light which illuminates our path in this Advent season. And every Wednesday as we do these devotions, I hope you are reminded of that. Oh, thank you, Valerie. Hi, Valerie. Um, and uh, Va Valerie, I, uh, I'll give a plug to because she's the one that helped me find my home before I moved here. So uh, Valerie's awesome. And she's a real estate broker. If you're needing someone to help you find a house, there's, that's a plug for Valerie. There you go, Valerie. Okay. So um, anyway, um, so back to our study here. So anyway, I, I just like for us every week to be reminded, though, of the brightness that we have um, in, in Christ in this Advent season, in this season of darkness, seemingly darkness, which seems unimportant, but the light of Christ continues to shine within us all. And so as you come to worship this week, I pray that you are, especially if you're a member here at Good Shepherd, and if you're not a member of our church, we invite you to come join us. Uh, we are in... Um, in uh, the heart of Woodstock, Georgia. Uh, two services on Sunday, uh, one at 8.30 in the morning for you early birds, and then one at 10.45. The 8.30 is our traditional, 10.45 is our praise service. So um, anyone is invited to come and join us for worship. So 
so uh, I'm going to close with uh, some uh, prayer here. And I want to invite, if you have anyone or anything you want me to pray for right now, if you want to put that in the chat, I am happy to add that to the prayers. And I'll look up when I get to that point. And, um, and of course, I will um, add those names. But um, I'm going to close this uh, devotion first, and then we will have a moment of prayer. So let us pray. God of strength and beauty. Draw us together in worship of you in our sanctuary. When we are tired or reluctant to pray or praise, put us in the pew anyway. And when we gather, we present, be present with us as we sing, as we pray, as we listen, as we receive Holy Communion, so that we may receive your joy and blessing. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so I'm now I'm going to uh, go to some larger prayers here. And again, if you want to add names there to thanks, Clint, I see it, and I will add that. Um, if you want to add names to the chat, and I will try to read those out when I get to the par portion part of naming some names. So let us pray. Gracious and abundant God, we thank you for opportunities of worship throughout this community. And Lord, we know that many of us cry out to you in different names. And Lord, we know you hear it all. We thank you for opportunities of worship. We thank you for opportunities which allow us to connect with one another. We thank you, Lord, especially for everything that you have entrusted to us. The talents, the gifts. Help us, Lord, to always be mindful that we are called to give ourselves away. And so as we come here for worship in this sanctuary space, help us, Lord, to then go out to be a mirror and reflection of your love and grace and light in this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious and abundant God, we thank you for those who are hurting today. We pray for those who are serving our community we pray for our city mayor, our governor, all of our state representatives, all of our senators. We pray for those who are voting today and up until December 6. And Lord, we thank you for the opportunity and the freedom that we have to do so. Thank you, Lord, for placing leaders in our communities who guide us, Give them, Lord, the spirit of gratitude and the constant presence of you so that your will be done for all people. So that we see an end to racism, an end to injustices, an end to indifference. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we thank you for the sun, the moon, the stars, the dark, the light. We thank you, Lord, for the rain that nourishes our land, for waterways and clean water that we have in most of our homes. Be with the many countries who do not have water. Help them to find places of refuge. And Lord, we also lift up to you our lakes in the surrounding areas here. Help us, Lord, to be better caretakers of what you have entrusted to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we know there are many who are hurting today. We lift these persons up to you now. Rosemary, Carolyn, those affected by storms, Ivory, Hank, and the many others who maybe weren't typed into the chat, but Lord, we know that you know who they are. We lift them up to you either silently or out loud at this time. If it is your will, Lord, bring healing bring peace, bring respite. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we give thanks for all the saints who have gone before, who have lit the dark paths for us, who have guided us and molded us in places of worship, who now rest in you. We pray for those who are grieving this holiday season, who either just celebrated a loss this year or are still grieving the loss of a loved one. Bring them the resurrection hope and the assurance of your presence in times of darkness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abundant mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. All right. So just a few quick announcements. Again, you don't need the book, but if you want the book, it is called Advent Reflections, You Shall Have a Song. There's a, this book actually contains a little devotion for every day of the week. And um, next week, we'll be looking at Philippians chapter 1. And um, I'm, so every week, we will light a candle, and I'll sing some songs, and, and then we will go have a, just a short reflection and some prayer. So thank you very much for joining us today. I wish you all a blessed day. Um, once again, if you're new to our page and new to um, our Facebook page and need a place to worship, you are always welcome here. Our services are on Sunday morning at 8.30 a.m. That's our traditional service. And again, at 10.45, that's our praise service with our, our praise band uh, leading worship. So we invite you anytime to come to our church. Uh, we are here for this community and certainly here for you, especially in this holiday season. Um, and uh, we look forward to seeing you all soon. And, and thank you all for joining me today. I'll see you later. And for those of you attending Bible study, I guess I'll see you tomorrow. And for the rest of you, keep looking up because that's where it all is. Bye.